Lots of my colleagues and friends are all working remotely. I've got five essential tips for running an effective workshop style meeting remotely. Sit tight. Thanks for coming back. Mike Spizak here, just outside of Spies Lab, super nice outside. And today we are talking about effective ways to run a remote workshop style meeting. Typically, these style of meetings, like design thinking workshops, event storming, process decomposition, and the like, are best and most effective when they're executed co-located. Okay, let's face it, lots of workshops just have a better energy level when they're executed collectively, on site, in a room, together. However, that is not always possible. And with recent events, more and more people just have to get creative and effective at running these types of meetings remotely. I have collated five tips from experienced designers and meeting facilitators worldwide. Okay, let's jump right into it with tip number one. <laughs> well, that sounded really official. Let's jump into it with tip number one. You have to lay down a social contract and do that in the meeting right up front. Mike, what's a social contract? I'm gonna tell you. In the spirit of agile, Social contracts are put in place by teams to define the way that they will work together. It's an agreement between team members that enables them to self-organize and work effectively. Now, self-organizing does not mean it's the Wild West. <coughs> For a remote-based workshop, it should include things like showing up on time, when the workshop will start and when it will end, keeping your webcam on so everyone can see each other, participation levels and expectations of your behavior during the meeting. Having this laid out right up front will make for a much smoother workshop. And if there are people there that cannot abide by these rules, go ahead and drop. In fact, you should tell them that. We will happily give you an update on the next playback. Which brings me to the next tip. Limit the number of attendees at your workshop. You only want essential people at your meeting. And workshops with lots of people in person can be difficult to control. Which is why in this case, less is more. Now, this will vary from workshop to workshop, but I would recommend no more than eight to 10 participants, max. Anything more than this will just be difficult to control participation. People will switch off their cameras, they'll start to drift, and basically just become disengaged. Which catapults us to the next tip. Keep the workshop duration short. It is said the average attention span of a human is only 10 to 18 minutes. After this time, our minds just start to drift. With this in mind, your workshop meeting should really be no longer than three hours max. Now, I know some design thinking workshops last for days. If this is the case, I would opt for shorter duration over a higher frequency. Maybe do three hour sessions over a four day period. Anything longer than three hours, your participation levels will go down and you'll just end up with diminished returns. Next, you want a plan B for your tools, remote work, Work from home and remote workshops are gonna have some dependency on tools and technology. Some of these tools will include things like web conferencing software, WebEx, Zoom, GoToMyMeeting. These are technologies that will allow you to see your participants as long as they're using their webcam. You're gonna need collaboration tools like Mural. It also helps to have a group note-taking tool like BoxNote, Evernote, SimpleNote, OneNote. I was trying to see how long I could keep going with the note tools, but that's, uh, that's about where it ends. None of these tools is an official endorsement from me and only use tools and technology that have been approved for use from your company. Not doing so could have potentially serious security exposure. Don't do it. So you need to make sure every participant at your workshop can access these tools and use them. And you should have a plan B in case the tool stops working. With larger groups of people working from home and remote these days, some of these collaboration tools are under a lot of performance stress. Make sure you have an alternate way of accomplishing your workshop tasks in case some of these tools has a problem. All right, finally, the workshop facilitator must come in high energy. Look, I know running meetings is hard work. Facilitating workshops is even harder but you need to keep the audience engaged and participating. And that means the meeting facilitator needs to work extra hard at keeping the energy levels high. Make sure the agenda and objectives are clear right up front. Have your social contract ready to go. Minimize lag time. I'd even recommend having a second or co-facilitator. The job of the second facilitator is to monitor the webcams of all the other participants. Ensure there's interaction, engagement, read the body language. Make sure none of your participants look confused or disconnected. If so, that facilitator can jump in. Provide colorful commentary. Sometimes having that secondary voice keeps the workshop fresh, but you have to come in with high levels of energy and focus, whatever it takes. 
You know, you know what I'm saying? All right, on the way out the door here, quick bonus tip. If you can, immerse yourself in the meeting. I recommend your participants do the same thing. Now you guys can't see what I see when I'm in Spee's lab at a meeting, but I have monitors around me. I can immerse myself in the meeting. That's it for me. If you thought this video was useful or enjoyable, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Go ahead and tap that like button. Now go crush your next remote workshop and I will see you next time. <laughs>